On your Facebook page, you mentioned putting a system in place for supporting the monastery food-wise. Could you please elaborate on how this system should be set up for Theravada monks and how people could be of service to monks in general? I've actually, I think I've commented on this, I had this question or a similar question. Um, but there's, but it's interesting because of obviously I've been thinking about this, and it it occurs to me that you know this kind of system is not not really ideal, right? The ideal would be to well the principle. Forgetting about the ideal for a second, the principle is. Um, applying to those people who are interested or looking to uh, do a good deed look looking to give already hmm? that is actually that's an important principle it's not it's not readily readily evident some people think it should more be some people think that the way buddhism works is they see a monk People would see a monk going on alms round and think, "Oh, here's someone who needs food. Uh, let me support him or her because they need it." That's not actually why the alms round was was um, created or, or was put. It was instated in Buddhism. It's because it was instated because there were people who had set up such um, offerings. You know, they would stand. It was a it was an all, it was a sort of a um, tradition, um, and and even even that notwithstanding, the it's an important distinction because it otherwise slips into begging, right, or um, advertising, and so there's actually a curious rule. As I recall, you know, if, if i if my memory serves me, where monks are yes, and it, it, the protocol is quite clear that the, the the bowl a monk's bowl should be under their robe at all times, except when someone is offering food. The point being, you should not you can't advertise that you're actually looking for food, and regardless of of how it happens. This is an important principle to keep in mind at all times, and and or let's say specifically when going on alms round, is that you're not um, looking to encourage people to give. You are, even though it may encourage them to give. You know, obviously that that happens definitely, and most of the time that's what happens is people see it and they say, "Oh, you know, here's someone who needs food. Let me give them some food." Or Oh, at the very least, oh, here's a chance for me to support Buddhism, so then, then they support it. But nonetheless, in the monk's mind, there has to be a sense of um, of non-advertisement. So, to some extent, we're 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 we're, we're skirting this line. But, and so I thought of this this morning. I thought, hmm. This isn't quite how I'd envisioned living, you know, to have this set up a system where we're no longer directly dealing because people want to people want to order food from from restaurants for us. Of course, that doesn't work really because we people come to the monastery and offer food just on a whim. And so someone comes today and offers food, and then we get food from the restaurant. Suddenly, we've got twice as much food as we can eat, and often it would get thrown out. Furthermore, someone orders for four people, there's only three people, etc., etc. So, uh, so we switched. Now our idea is to order food from the grocery, from, from the grocery stores. So people want to order food from the grocery stores for us. But you know, this also is problematic because if, what if we get lots of fresh produ produce and we can't keep it and we can't use it all, then again we're throwing out. Food. So potentially, you know, there's these issues, but ideally, we're, we we want to try and um, 
arrange it ourselves. And the only input people, other people have is money, which is awful. You know, this isn't how you want to run things. You don't want to just, you know, uh, be a financial, you know, what a business where you run things and, and you require inputs of money. It's, I mean, it's, where did the alms round go? It was so much nicer when people were ordering from the restaurant or, or, um, or from the grocery store. But, so, so this thought came up that this isn't exactly the, the direction we want to go. But then the thought came up that I'm missing the point. The point is not food for me uh, or the, the other monks here. The point is we have meditators. We're dealing with a different kind of a system. Oops, I'm recording this. Huh? Sorry about that. Um, the system we're dealing with is a, is a meditation center, and we're dealing with lay people. So in fact, what we're talking about is lay people supporting lay people, meditators supporting other meditators, which is also very wholesome, but it works in a different way. These people are not monks, and they're certainly not able to go on alms round. <laughs> So we're dealing. We have a in in that to that extent. We have a lay organization, Sri Mangal International, that is running these courses, and that's lay people dealing with lay people. And as a monk, I really, you know, I'm probably not. I'm probably not acting entirely appropriately by getting involved with this. But in the modern day, this is how we run. We do things. The monks are kind of overseeing. Lay, so lay meditation centers. Well, even in Thailand, you know, the monks are quite involved with uh, lay meditation. You know, lay people coming to the monasteries. In some places, some places will 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 not do it that way. They will not have anything to do with the lay people. But our tradition has always, even in the time of Mahasi Sayadaw, all lay people went to the monasteries and were sort of taken care of. The, the monks were certainly at least partially involved. So practically speaking, we kind of have that. This isn't quite answering your question, but just giving some background and sort of the philosophies involved here. So, so this is a question that, I, that I'm asking is, in regards to the monks, what is a proper system? And I think it's important to not lose sight of that, um, that connection where you find people who want to give where you rely on people who want to give. And all you're doing with this technical or organization is facilitating that. How do you connect you know, the, 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 the person to be supported with the person doing the supporting? Um, the, the philosophy is a... I've talked about these three kinds of philosophies, the reciprocal... Uh, system, the prociprocal system, and what was the third one? The yeah, I've had, I don't have a name for it. Uh, I couldn't you know associative or or applicative or something. Anyway, reciprocal we understand is if 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 I give to you, you have to give me something back in return. This is a capitalist system. It doesn't work because. I want something from you. I don't want to give you anything, right? So it is. It's 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 not logical. Suppose you have a bunch of people. If someone suddenly needs something, you know, that that that's that need has nothing to do with 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 giving something, right? So, I mean, there's arguments against this, but but from a simplistic point of view, the 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 problem isn't solved by requiring something in return because people who who can't pay it you know if if it it sets sets you up for this problem where a person needs something and can't afford it or you know certain people can afford more or so on. it sets you up for this problem the prociprocal system is where um, if i give to you you're under an obligation to give to someone else this also is doesn't make any sense because you know, then the only people giving are those who have been given to, and you're never going to um, 
solve the problem of, of needs. The only system that really makes sense is where when someone needs something, you give it to them. Right? Anytime anyone gives, it's a one-sided transaction. Wherever it's needed, you, you, you associate or you, you um, allocate. Maybe allo allocative would be a good name. It's al you allocate resources uh, where they're needed. Now, of course, whether that works, it could work in the society or not. I don't know if that describes communism in any way, but, but I, d I don't think exactly. Um, so if, if you apply resources exactly as they're needed, um, mm -hmm. then, uh, then, then, then all needs are met, right? This is the ideal, probably the ideal, similar to the ideal of communism. But um, in a system such as Buddhism, that's the idea. You know, when I teach, I'm giving, you know, there's no, I cannot have the sense of, you know, requiring something in return. Uh, as well, everyone else in the system supports me because I need food. You know, I need food and I'm part of this system, so they give me that food. Uh, the system, in, in another thing you could say is the system requires me to have food, maybe even more than it requires other people to have food, because if because I'm you know in our organization I play a large role as as far as teaching. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, this isn't about me, but but you know the idea of a monk. You know, you support the monk because they play an important role. You support the teacher because they play an important role, and and uh, you, you 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 allocate or not not more resources, but you you concern yourself with that especially because that's an important part of the system um, I think that is the, you know that's an important you know that is where we start with this kind of system so the question is how in modern day society how do we apply these ideas of people ordering food online and so on I think you could potentially set up if we were only dealing with, suppose it was only me, right, and I was living alone in a house, um, I could I could potentially set up a system, you know, and that's the see that's the thing is I'm it's chaotic here and there's the Cambodian community and and so on so we can't easily um, predict from day to day what's going to happen. There's there's the Cambodian people. There's a group of Laotian people, and then there's the scattered Sri Lankan and 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 even Western people. So, I think donating groceries would be the best. Even that can be problematic because our our fridge space is limited. You know, we can't just accept groceries any which way. It has to be still systematic, but that's specifically because of the nature of it. We're dealing with two systems here: the meditators and the monks. If it was just me living in the house, probably easy to regulate. Make sure that this monk has food every day so he can do his online talks and continue, etc., etc. But I think really in this case, our system has to be a little more systematic. And I think we're really going to have to put the foot down, put our foot down and, and sort of um, require the grocery shopping to be systematic. Um, and... Not, so not, that not just accept, but not just accept random groceries from people. You know, we're, because we we threw around the idea of just, you know, accepting groceries from from California. Actually, someone said, "Oh, I'll contact my the Thai people because I have actually, I have a whole bunch of Thai ex students in California from when I was there, and they'll all send. Many of them are restaurant owners. They would all send groceries to Canada, no problem. I get boxes. In fact, I yet may." We yet may get boxes of groceries from California, I don't know. Actually, sending across the border might be difficult, I'm not sure. But um, it, it, unless it's dried, non-perishable goods, it's, um, it's not going to really work. So I think in this instance we're going to have to be systematic about it. Sorry, anyway, that's not quite... So the, the point is to how the system should be set up for Theravada monks. I mean, ideally, the monks should go on alms round. We had to set up here, and we could yet do that again. I think the problem is here in Hamilton, you know, it's not even a problem. We could do this. We just have to, you know, I have to get... I have to push the head monk, and we have to do this. 
we drive to their houses. We used to do this. We did this for a while. We, we got in the car with our bowls and everything, and uh, someone drove us to people's houses. And we, every day was, we actually had a schedule set up. This day we go to this house, this day. Every day we would go to someone's house and they would have food there. It's actually quite easy because there's Buddhists all over the city. Even here in Stony Creek, within a not, not such a wide range, we can find many people who are just would, would love to offer us food. It's quite inspiring to see how people are, how keen people are to do something. And if you consider, for for many people, that's their only connection with the religious life is to 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 give charity and to have that aspiration of supporting Buddhism. Would you bring the meditators with you? No, no, I wouldn't. See that that's the that's the thing that you know I'm wondering because beyond the monks, you're establishing a meditation center, and they have to eat too. Well, we wouldn't eat in these people's houses. We'd collect a, um, a pinto. What do you call these things? The stacked plates? Jansarat, they call in in Cambodian. It's a stacked uh, plates. It's a very big thing in Asia. It's okay. Stainless steel, full of food, and bring that back to the monastery and eat. We never would stay at their house, or rarely ever would eat at their houses. Um, another way is we've gone to, mon to, to restaurants we have a standing inv invitation at a Vietnamese restaurant a, a, a Cambodian but international restaurant and at least one other restaurant um, so you know, we can always go there we can always do that um, but this requires coordination vehicles you know, driver. That's not not entirely plausible, but the point being that, in regards to your question, the, the ideal is to um, approach those people to not be any inconvenience to them. the The key is this verse where the Buddha said, "The wise ascetic is like a bee. The bee goes to the flower and takes something very valuable, but not to the flower. The flower doesn't miss the pollen." And that's crucial, you know. It should, it shouldn't be um, painful. You know, it shouldn't be Im an imposition. The flower actually wants the bee. It wants the bee to take the pollen. It's, it, it benefits, and that's key. It should benefit. <laughs> yeah. So, barring the alms round, um, there are ways of setting up systems like they do in Sri Lanka of people bringing food daily to the monastery that also happens I, not as um, it's not as inspiring as the alms round something we should think we should keep in mind but I don't think it's going to work here because I have to deal with meditators and so it puts you and being being a meditation teacher always puts you in a special situation and even in the Winay it's mentioned special circumstances for someone who is teaching they um, you know, you have to treat them differently, and so as a teacher, I have to. You know, I can't have the luxury always of living my life the way I, the way an, an ordinary monk, well, an ordinary a monk who's not in that position can. I mean, I've had to deal with that many times. You know, whenever when I go to a, when I'm traveling, I live as a monk. But when you get in the position of a teacher, things change, and this is why you'll see the head of monasteries will often live his life quite different from the the this the ordinary or the the, the non uh, official monks the monks who don't have official capacity non teachers it's not even teachers it's having an official being being a mon monastic official you tend to have certain duties that kind of thing so that, there's that complication that not all monks are in the same position and you shouldn't criticize the head monk because he doesn't go on alms round. He can't. He has, often he can't. He has other things he has to do and it's just not convenient and not suitable for him to do that. Okay, anyway, enough time.